Hi, I'm Jason Eister of Eister Liars. For the last 20 years, I've been building fine folk instruments at my home, and my four children have been helping me. We're very excited about the work that we do and gratified that people around the world have really enjoyed our instruments. They've, they've written to us that their little babies have enjoyed listening to it, they themselves have been calmed by it, and it's been a way that they have been able to learn more about music and a wonderful entry into the wonderful world of pentatonic music. Our lyres are pentatonic instruments. We also do have one chromatic instrument. I hope you'll enjoy your instrument, and if you have any problems, feel free to contact me directly. We stand behind our instruments. Thank you so much. The lyres made by Eister Lyre Company generally come in seven, with seven strings or up to 15 strings. In contrast to the violin and the, the piano, the guitar, the pitch goes from low to high. And you can see that the lower strings are thicker and longer, and the higher strings that have a higher pitch are thinner and shorter. These strings are all placed at about 80% of breaking tension. That means that they're tightened so that they'll make a nice sound. Generally, these strings won't break. However, they can wear out, they could get dirty. Some people recommend changing the strings after a year. And sometimes you may tighten the string too much and it will break. To tighten the string, you do use this tuning wrench. And you can see it has a small square hole in the top which fits over the tuning pin. And you turn back and forth. I recommend that you always play the string while you are tuning. As you can see, counterclockwise lowers the pitch, clockwise raises the pitch. Now if you don't listen to it, the string will break. Remember to save your grommet. You don't want to lose that. The next thing to do is to remove the other end, the ball end. As you can see, all of the strings have a ball on one end, and that's placed in here. You can also throw this out. The instruction manual and the web show you the different sized strings that you need. Each lyre comes with a set of replacement strings. On this lyre and most of the lyres, the shortest string, the highest pitch, requires this size 12 string. There's a ball end and a plain end. We're going to want to put the string in from the other side. You can see all of the ball ends here. So we're going to push this in and pull it through. And the ball will fit right in there nicely just comes right in. Now remember the grommet. The next thing then is to come back to our pin. Now when the string broke, the pin was in rather tight usually. So you want to go counterclockwise several times and until you have at least a half an inch showing here. So you want to have it raised above the others. I recommend turning it three times around is probably enough. When you do turn it around, make sure you'll see there's a little hole that goes all the way through. You want that hole to face this end. It makes it easier to put the string in. And this hole goes all the way through. So next, I'm going to take the plain end and push it through. The next step is to bend this string. Keep the string tight 
and measure about two inches out and just make a kink. You don't need to be too exact. Just like that, so you have kind of a, a backward L. The next step is to tighten back. So this is going to be the end of your string. We do this this way, and you'll see, so that we don't end up with any sharp ends that, that could hurt anyone. Now, very important, hold the string and go in a counterclockwise direction. So that means around this way. You could also say going up and to the left. Counterwise, counterclockwise direction two times. Okay, I'm going to do that again. You put the string through, pull it up tight, bend once, pull it back, and then in a counterclockwise direction, one, two, and if it seems pretty loose, like this is I guess even three times, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, you want to get it sort of snug. Now to help you, you should use this hand and just hold that string a little snug. Pick up your tuning wrench and put it on the string and begin to tighten. You can see you want to keep this nice and long because we're going to be end up breaking this right where it's attached to the other strings so it'll be nice and tight. As you keep tightening, keep playing it and keep tuning because you don't want to go over. Now you'll see that with a new string, you need to stretch it out a little because it's not going to keep its pitch for the first few hours or the first few days. Once you've got it tuned, take the extra length and bend back and forth. You're taking advantage of metal fatigue. The steel gets very tired right where you're bending it and it will suddenly break off and it has no sharp end to hurt. While on a piano, the pitch gets higher as you go from left to right. The lyre is, is, is opposite to that. So if we put the lyre upside down, we can see the same tuning to help you. Here's the meadow lyre, that's this lyre, and you can see it goes D, E, G, A, B, D, E. So this D is the lowest note, which is right here on the piano, going up to this high E, which is right there on the piano. So from low D up to high E. Cameron Rose provides a tuner for your lyre. You can use a guitar, a piano, a pitch pipe, an organ, a variety of instruments to tune. This is kind of handy though. It's, it's small and, and uh, fits in your pocket. There are two ways to use this. First of all, it is electronic, so you need to put a battery in and you need to turn it on. The first way to use it is one which will detect the note while this mode uh, that will sense the note can be useful for getting exact tuning. You might find that it's easier to hear the tone in order to get an approximate tone, to get up to where you want to be. By holding this sound button until it says, hold it down until it has the C. That is the C note. This lyre, the lowest note, is a D. So push past C sharp, D. So this is the note of the lowest string. So this 
The next string will be E. Again, you can see number two string E, which would correspond to this note here. And here we are. Again, the note's in tune. The third string is G. There's the G. Now that note doesn't sound quite right, probably. So I take my tuning wrench. Oh, let's see. There we go. string is an A. That's in tune. The fifth string is B. Sixth string. We have to go back. This has one octave of notes, so I have to go back to the beginning again. Now you'll hear the note that you hear is a lower note by one octave, but you can hear it still as the same one. Then on up to E. Okay, that note is flat. I'm going to go clockwise. And again, I can check that by pushing again on my sound button and holding it down. And there it is, exactly E. So you have two ways to use this. Either one way, which will sense the note, and the other, which will give you the note to your ear. After several years of use, or when the weather is extremely dry, it's possible that your pins will slip and won't keep their tune. What you can do is first remove the string, completely remove the pin. You can finish just with your fingers if you want. Then take any toothpick, it can be a round toothpick or a square toothpick, and break it in half. When you break it in half, you'll see that there's sort of a flat side and a round side. Now place this in the hole and just break it off. and You want to have the thickest part down near the bottom and just drop it back in and replace your pin. Turning in a clockwise direction. Remember, you loosen or lower the string pitch by going counterclockwise. You tighten the pin or tighten the pitch by going clockwise. There you have a tight pin.